Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. But before anything else, please make sure that you're already part of hashtag CamFam. Make sure that you've already clicked on that subscribe button and bell button so you're always notified whenever I have new videos like this one. it's going to be semi-educational because we're going to be talking about how to decode dress codes. If you're already starting to attend events or business functions or like weddings or just basically just a gathering, for sure you've already seen what a dress code is. Like you've already been required to come in a certain dress code. Now, I just feel like it's really important for people to understand what a certain dress code really entails because it's just proper etiquette and it's a way of showing respect to not just the organizers, or to the event but also to the other attendees or guests so let's get down to it so let's start from the super duper formal ones down to the casual ones so the pinaka pinaka formal one is black tie well if you don't consider white tie white tie kasi is not so much used here in the Philippines but abroad they do use white tie every now and then but so yeah let's start with black tie I'll try to explain white tie later but black tie formal or black tie event so if that's the dress code it basically just means that it's really really formal it's kind of like strictly formal but a step up so if, for example for guys they're expected to wear tuxedos with like a black bow tie or a slim black tie but most of the time it's really tuxedos with a bow tie and for women you're kind of expected to be in a long gown like this is really strictly formal I feel like for black tie events, I mean, you guys know that I love color, but I feel like for black tie, just to be on the safer side, it's nicer if you stick to like blacks or neutrals, or if you really want some color, then some like really dark or jewel tones. I feel like those are much better for black tie events. Nothing too funky, preferably no prints, just uh, something that's really classic. Because when you think of black tie, it really sounds super duper classic. So now I opted for this really nice like velvet dress. It's very simple. It's got just a nice low cut back, but it's still very decent. I'm not showing a lot of skin. It's a very subtle way of showing skin and the silhouette is super duper classic. So if you're wearing something like what I'm wearing here where there's no beads, no lace, not a lot of embellishments, it's just basically a really simple silhouette, then you can always dress it up with accessories, bring out all the bling, all the diamonds, the big jewels, the Madame Tita jewelry, that's when you bring it out and you can easily dress up your outfit and make it look much much more formal than its original style. Of course, women are expected to wear heels. If you're not good with heels, then you can always just wear a little bit of a heel, like a lower heel or if you're wearing flats, I mean understand if like especially if for our more mature community for example like our lolas and stuff like that they of course can wear flats but it's nicer if you're wearing flats then just make it more formal meaning there are embellishments or bead work or diamonds on the shoes or they're more on the dressier type of flats not really like your normal Malay flats and I know I mentioned white tie. So white tie is basically a step up of the black tie. So usually this is where all the big poofy gowns come out, the structured gowns. It's very Met Gala or like very Oscars, that type of dressing. So it's really like the sky's the limit. This is where you can be extra, 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 extra. We don't usually have that type of dress code here in the Philippines. Usually we use like let's say gala or like ball gowns or something like that. But that basically means white tie. Next up is formal. So I know this can be kind of confusing because formal kind of still sounds like black tie. I think the distinction is much clearer when it comes to the men's wear because for them, it just means that you don't have to be wearing a tuxedo. You could be wearing just a normal, like, complete suit. But for the women, I think here in the Philippines at least, abroad it's different, but here we tend to be dressier. So when you say formal, people usually expect you to be in a gown. So, but then, not to fret, if you don't have a gown, you don't have to worry. You can always wear separates as long as they are on the formal side and you style it in a formal way. Like for example, in what I'm wearing, I'm wearing actually like a bold colored skirt with a very bold print as well. But you can see that the silhouette is very formal. It's floor length. It's got a nice 
structure to it that makes it look more formal as well and I just paired it with a more formal top as well so it really comes with the type of fabric that you use so the fabric for my top is dressier than your normal top I mean I'm not wearing it with like a normal knit shirt which some people can wear I mean you could get away with it depends on the type of event you're going to but yeah it's easy to just come up with a formal style even with separates you can do like a pantsuit or a set of pants and your top you just have to always pay attention to the type of fabric like it's nicer if it's a heavy type of fabric or if it's not heavy then it's silk or or there's a sheen to it yeah so that's how you still get a formal look even if you're not in a fold down accessories also really really help like you can go more extra when it comes to your accessories if you're wearing something more understated or you're wearing something that doesn't look so formal right at the get-go the way you accessorize it will really really help as well now if you don't have or if you're the type that you don't like to be wearing like a floor length type of outfit because I don't know for practical reasons because we do tend to trip when we're in floor length I'm not naming names but anyways if you don't want to wear anything floor length you could still get away with the midi length I feel like for me personally for formal wear I don't think you should be wearing anything that's cut above the knees it has to be at least lower like mid shin or like right by your ankles like a t-length that type of thing is fine so what you're seeing now is a gold dress that I've worn before for a Pernobius fashion show in Barcelona so I've worn this before for a formal type of event but because it's just binuhusan siya ng beads like inuladan siya of beads because it's golden it's a metallic color it's super extra because it's metallic and it's got a lot of bead work it still passes as a formal dress even if it's not full length I mean if you put that dress beside my black tie dress they still look like they can be for the same event because again it's super duper dressy it's super duper extra Next up is cocktail. So cocktail attire is kind of like semi-formal. I feel like for me, it's more kind of like semi-formal. So semi-formal and cocktails interchangeable for me. So this is where I feel like you shouldn't be wearing anything floor length. You shouldn't be wearing a ball gown. I mean, I know that it's nice to be dressy, but don't be too dressy that it's clearly not cocktails. This is where you can really play around with fun dresses, fun colors, bold prints. So in my case, I am wearing a nice, silk dress in a really fun pink color. It can easily be a normal, very madam casual day, but it's really how you accessorize it and how you pair it with your shoes and your earrings. So this is cocktail. Again, it's much more fun. It doesn't have to be always like a long length dress. I mean, this is again a cocktail. So you can go for a shorter dress above the knee is fine. As long as it doesn't look like you're going to a club and you're wearing like a bodycon dress. It's not a cocktail should still be dressier than what you're gonna wear in a club. So here's another example of what I'm wearing. It's like a nice like electric orange dress it's super statement making it's very fashion <laughs> And what makes it still cocktail and semi-formal is that it's got a nice, more formal fabric. Like, it's a metallic sheen. So again, you have to pay attention to the fabric. If this dress was in, let's say, a knitted fabric, like, let's say, I don't know, wool, mainet, yes. Then it kind of looks like it's more casual and not cocktail. You get what I mean? So I feel like people have to be careful when it comes to cocktails or semi-formal because it is a fun kind of dress code but don't take it too far. Don't wear something that's too casual. It's not like a mini skirt top kind of event. It's not like a mini dress kind of event. It's still dressy, dressier than normal, dressier than your Friday night out. You also have to pay attention to your accessories. It's a cocktail or a semi-formal event so don't be bringing huge bags. I know that you may be coming from work but please do make the extra effort of bringing a smaller, nicer, like dressier events type of bag. Don't be bringing your big office tote bag that's not for cocktail dress codes. Next up is business formal. So I know a lot of you are like yuppies or career women or career men. And so when they say business formal, most often than not, it means that you have to have like a suit on or a blazer on at least. If you're not too sure if you could dress a certain way, like maybe I could make do without like if I just wear like a normal dress, like a corporate looking dress, maybe that's fine. But then if you're unsure if this is really good enough for a business formal event, then it's always better to be on the square side. It's better that people think you're too square and too appropriate 
stupid than to think you're not. So just to be on the safe side, if you're not really sure how formal this business formal event really is, then it's always nice to be in a classic traditional suit. I feel like for me, it's nice if you're in a business formal event that whatever you're wearing inside, even if you have a blazer on, you still have to pay attention to what you're wearing inside. It still has to be the kind of top that is appropriate for work. You cannot be wearing like a silk camisole that's like this low because I don't know, I, I have a blazer on, that's fine. No, because you have to think that when you take off your blazer, you still look proper and you still look decent and it's still very businessy. And I think anything that has a business something or a smart something, you always have to be wearing closed shoes. I think it's much more formal, it's much more business appropriate. Again, this is just to be on the safe side. If you're not sure, it's better to be appropriate than to offend or to be improper. Also, please pay attention to the color. Again, it depends on what kind of industry you're in or what kind of event that is. But if you're in a, like a normal, like strict corporate type of business formal event, then it's much nicer if you stick to neutrals, nothing too loud. I know that you're fashionable deep down inside but it could still be fashionable while being conservative or while being traditional. You know, you don't have to always be breaking the rules and being a rebel. There is a time and place for all of that. And also when it comes to your accessories, it's better to be on the simpler side, like a simple stud, simple necklace, nothing too loud. Unless you're the boss, you're the girl boss, then okay, accessorize away. You're already in that position to do whatever you want, basically. No one's judging you, you're the one doing the judging now because you're the boss. <laughs> Next up is business casual, which is kind of like smart casual, but business casual, I think that's clear. Not enough room to misinterpret. So when they say business casual, then it has to still be something that is appropriate enough for you to wear to work for your office or corporate world. Still, pay attention to the kind of sleeves that you have on. I think it's always better if you're wearing a sleeveless. It's the full kind of sleeveless. It's not like the halter or like a spaghetti strap or a tube top that's still a no. I feel like it's much better if you still have like a full sleeveless on with at least like maybe two to three inches in width. And then aside from that, you also have to pay attention to your skirt. If you want to wear a skirt that's a bit higher than your knee line, that's fine. Maybe just two inches max. Because again, this is a business event still. It still says business casual. So you have to pay attention to that. As I've said earlier, if it says business, then it's always, always better to have closed shoes on. You can have like a sling back type of shoes like what I'm wearing here. But again, it's closed shoes in front. So it's much, much more appropriate when it comes to business settings. Because this is a casual event, you can make do without the cardigan. You could just wear a sleeveless top. The cardigan is just there if you know you're easily cold because usually these functions are in air conditioned rooms and maybe you're cold. So at least you don't look as uptight as wearing a blazer on, but you still have something that looks kind of, you know, dressier than just nothing. Okay, I've already touched on smart casual. Smart casual is basically casual but smarter. <laughs> basically, it's casual but look smart, you know? You can't just be wearing something that you'd be wearing to the beach. At the end of the day, you still have to be smart. Now, this is open to a lot of different interpretations. When it comes to all of these events, it always comes down to who the host is, what this event is for, what is this industry. You know, every industry and every event, you know, how lenient a dress code is depends on what type of event you're going to. So for example, let's say if I'm going to like a smart casual event but it's like a business networking event then it really is I think like a really really smart casual event but if I'm going to a smart casual event that's held in Boracay by let's say a fashion brand then smart casual for them is much more casual than smart casual for a business networking event you know what I mean so if you're not sure and you want to be again on the safe side then it's much better for you to stay away from sneakers no sneakers like for example what I'm wearing now it's a nice casual knit dress but I made sure to wear it with some low heels i'm not just wearing it with let's say like slides like my birkenstocks here i'm not wearing it with sneakers because for some smart casual events it really depends but for some smart casual events if you want to be on the safe side then sneakers are a no no um, if you're a guy you can wear like a shirt jeans and then just throw on a blazer on top of it or a smart jacket or a dress jacket then that's fine as well so it's just basically a casual look but there's just more effort put into it it's dressed down but still at the end of the day smart and last but not the least, casual, which means anything goes. You can wear anything you want. Again, there's always an exception. You always, 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 like with any of these events or any of these dress codes, you always have to consider the host. What kind of person is the host? Let's say if I were saying that, guys, just be casual. I just booked the function room. It's just a casual thing. So you know that I booked the function room. So don't be coming in your flip-flops and your 
jersey shorts and your jersey top. You get what I mean? So you always have to think when they say casual, okay, I know casual, I'm free to wear whatever I want, but you also have to consider the venue. What is this? Is this like a birthday party? Is the host the type of person who's like a dressy type of casual? So these are things that you always have to consider. So that's it for my decoding a dress code. I really wanted to do more types of dress codes like maybe beach formal or beach chic or like bow chic and stuff like that. But maybe that's for another time, another vlog. Let me know if you guys are interested in a vlog like that. Leave a comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you guys like this. If there's anything that's confusing, I know I tend to babble and like go around in circles. But I hope that Joanna, my editor, was able to edit me well. <laughs> yeah, but if there's anything that caused a bit of a misunderstanding or confusion, then just again leave me a comment below. I'll try my best to answer them. And my parting words again, it's better to be on the appropriate side if you're unsure than to be improper or to be rude. And again, always consider your host, the event, the venue. These are things that will help you understand or gauge what kind of formal is the formal event that they're expecting. I feel like they're. I feel. Mm, sorry. And you don't want mm, dress codes in. Ooh, nagawa ko na sa Joanna, thank God.